I'm Lisa Shaw and we're here at The Living Machine, an ecological wastewater treatment facility in Fintorn community in Scotland. Together with my husband and my dad, we started a business called Biomatrix Water. And we're really focused on nature-based solutions to solving water problems and water challenges in the world. Well, this actually came out of work that my dad had done for many years. He had worked with Dr. John Todd, who was really one of the founders of this idea of putting whole systems together. And instead of using chemicals for wastewater treatment, for example, he would use the plants in greenhouses. Well, let's combine aquaculture with plants, with worms, with wastewater, with food. And then because my parents had such a connection to Findhorn, having met and married here, um, they wanted to bring the living machine to Findhorn. And so this was built in 1995. This treats the wastewater for 132 buildings, which is about 400 people equivalent or 72 cubic meters per day and it treats all of the wastewater. So that's the black water from the toilets and the gray water which comes from the showers, from the washing dishes. You know, well what about if I'm using um, drain cleaner because my drain is blocked? Will it affect the living machine? And in general it's actually quite a resilient system. Natural systems are resilient. Um, it can handle it although we recommend using a more um, nature-friendly kind of soap or detergent whenever possible. Scottish water, they come a few times a year and they perform tests and it has to meet a certain water quality standard that is safe to be discharged and it's always met that with no problem. And first the wastewater arrives and goes into a septic tank where the solids are separated and then it flows into this tank right here and this is a closed aerobic tank, which means that there's aerators that pump oxygen into the water here. Um, but because the septic tanks have been anaerobic, meaning no oxygen, and then they go to being aerobic, it's quite a smelly process. So we have these covered. And these are the only tanks that won't have any plants. The process is really to reduce BOD or biochemical oxygen demand. And these tanks are actually twice as big as they look. So the same amount is actually below the ground here. Floating ecosystems, which is really a matrix here where there's pipes which are made from recycled high density polyethylene and they're fusion welded and then bolted together with stainless steel and they're wrapped with a geotextile and then a coconut wire. And there's planting lanes, so then plants are planted into them. And what's really happening is that the roots of the plants are growing down into the water. And the microorganisms, which are growing and multiplying because of the air and the oxygen that's going into the tanks, they then attach onto these plant roots and they form communities which are called biofilm communities. So this is a sample of the water from the first of the open tanks. So there's different types of microorganisms. There's aerobic and anaerobic, and they each do important work in terms of breaking down pollutants. Aerobic bacteria are especially important, and so that's why we add air, oxygen, into the water. They are really breaking down the long chain pollutants, which are in the water, and transforming them into short train non-pollutants. And so it's really a breakdown process. The plants do absorb a little bit of the pollution as well, but it's less than 30%. Most of the treatment is actually happening is a breakdown process instead of an um, uptake process. Actually, if you can see both sides here, they're two identical trains and the water just splits and goes half to this side and half to that side. The next tanks are the same. There's four of the same in each train and they also have these plant racks. One of the processes that's happening is nitrification. And so we're nitrifying ammonia with oxygen into nitrite, which becomes nitrate. And then in the final tanks, there's denitrification, where it turns into nitrogen gas, which just is completely harmless and goes into the air. So we use these beds in the center here for testing different things. And there was a project that we were doing recently where we needed to test how long the wastewater needed to stay 
in a treatment system. Um, and so what we could do was we could control the length of time that the water would stay in this. The plants do not need to be replaced, but sometimes we do give them a haircut. But what's really important is the roots of the plants. It doesn't actually matter that much if they're dying down a bit in the winter because underneath those roots are still healthy and living. And in the spring, the green shoots will come up again. Now there's a change. This, these tanks right here do not have oxygen in them anymore. All of those microorganisms that have multiplied with the oxygen, all of a sudden they start to starve because they don't have oxygen and they die. And then they sink down to the bottom of these tanks. And at the bottom of the tank, it's actually conical. And we, we take those dead sludge and we actually put it back into the beginning of the tank where it goes through it again. And what you see floating on the top of the tank here is a zola, and it's really here to prevent algae from growing in the pipes and clogging them up because the sunlight, if it just hits water with no aeration, will grow algae. From that tank there, where there's no oxygen and all of those microorganisms have died and settled down, as you can imagine, the water now is much cleaner. And so the final tanks are really about polishing. And so what you have is an anoxic tank, which is actually a combination of kind of the anaerobic and the aerobic. And so in the center, there's a little bit of air and there's some rocks in here. And the bacteria, they, they grow onto those rocks. And then around the outside, there's no air and they filter through the rocks, goes again from that tank into the next tank and into the next tank, and just being gradually more and more polished and more and more clean. After the bacteria had died in the conical tanks and settled to the bottom, there would actually be this new bacteria that were multiplying again in these tanks because there is a little bit of oxygen in there, and so they create that foam, and it's a completely natural part of the system. This plant that you see here is actually papyrus so famous for the Egyptians having used it for making paper, but it's also a great aquatic plant. So now that it's gone through the final polishing tanks, the water quality is really excellent and it meets the standards for water discharge within the UK. You can see that this is just a little pond that shows what the water looks like when it comes out. And there's fish living in that pond, and that's a good sign. Well, the water could be used for recycling. Um, some living machines, the water goes through an additional treatment step, which is to disinfect it with ultraviolet light. Here in Scotland, they decided that we have a lot of water. It's quite a rainy place, so there wasn't such a need for water recycling. So it is just discharged to the land. So one of the great advantages of nature-based solutions, like the living machine, is that there actually is very little that's needed in the way of maintenance itself. It's a very healthy and robust system. Um, well, there's a few benefits to using a living machine instead of conventional wastewater treatment. Um, one of them is it actually uses much less energy. Another is that it's using plants as the main workhorses of the technology. This is actually a very popular place for insects and spiders. There's different forms of wastewater treatment depending on the amount of footprint that you have in terms of nature-based solutions. And if people have a large area of land, then they could use a different treatment option, which would be using a constructed wetland, also known in the UK as a reed bed. That actually uses even less energy. And if you even had a slope, it didn't, wouldn't have to be powered at all. And the wastewater could just flow through that. And because it has time, retention time, it can sit in that wetland for several days and get treated and then be discharged. So that would be kind of the most energy efficient, least impact way to treat wastewater. The problem is it actually takes quite a lot of land area. But when you need to have a smaller footprint, then having it be more condensed and putting in some energy can be the way to go. And part of the reason for the greenhouse also is that it makes the temperature a little bit warmer and the warmer water in the tank, um, the more the microorganisms like it and the more that they grow.